Today's lesson objectives are TEK 3.2C and 3.2D. 3.2C states that we will represent a number on a number line as being between two consecutive multiples of 10, 100, 1,000, or 10,000, and use words to describe relative size of numbers in order to round whole numbers. 3.2D states that we will be able to compare and order whole numbers up to 100,000 and represent comparisons using the symbols greater than, less than, or equal to. This first slide is showing you some examples of, a, of number lines. Each number line is using a different size place value. The first is using tens, counting by tens, multiples of tens, from 10 to 100. The second is using 100s, counting by multiples of 100 up to 1,000. The third example is using 1,000s, and again, you're counting by multiples of 1,000 until you reach 10,000. And our final example is using 10,000s, counting by 10,000s up till it reaches 100,000. We use these number lines to help us um, place uh, numbers where they would go in the number line, giving us a visual of the value of that number. So in our first example here, where is the number 92 on the provided number line? We look at the place value of the 9, and we're trying to figure out between, which is in the tens place, and we're trying to figure out which two tens it would fall between. So 9 is 90. So it's, and we have 92, so it's going to be something greater than 90, but less than 100. Now, when you look at the place value directly to the right of the tens place, in this case the ones place, the 2 is going to tell you whether it should be closer to the 90 or closer to the 100. Remember, it takes 10 ones to make another 10, so halfway would be 5. So 2 is less than halfway, so it's going to be closer to the 90 than the 100. In the second example, 54,321, Again, if we're trying to find out which two tens that would fall between, I would look at the tens place, which is 20, and the ones place, which is 1, so 21. So it needs to be between 54,320 and 54,330. And since the ones place is a 1, that tells me it's going to be very close to the 54,320. So notice they place the point closer to, the, to that marking. You can do the same thing when trying to find between what two consecutive multiples of 100 a number lies. When looking at 459, we got something greater than 400, but less than 500. On, so on the number line, we know it's going to fall between those 200 places. But when we look at the tens place, which is 50, that would be halfway between the 200s places, right? 450 would be halfway between 400 and 500. So then we look at the ones place. Well, it's a 9. So 9 tells us it's just slightly greater than halfway. So notice the point's just slightly larger than halfway between 400 to 500. You can do it with a number that's um, greater than 100. So in this case, 54,321. If I want to know what, between what two consecutive hundreds that lies, again, I'll look at the hundreds place, it's 300. I'll look at the tens place, it's 20. So 320 would be between 300 and 400. So I would have 54,300, 54,400 is the two markings it falls between. And because it's a 21, um, that's less than 50, which is halfway between hundreds, right? So it needs to be closer to 54,300. Noticing what, that they did that with the point here. For this slide, we're trying to find out between which two consecutive multiples of 1,000 each of these numbers falls on the number line. So in our first example, we have 2,892. So counting by thousands, you know that your number would fall between 2,000 and 3,000. To determine which it's closest to, um, again, look at the hundreds place. Halfway between 1,000 would be 500. So 2,500 would be, would be the middle. So 2,800 would be much greater than that. So that point would need to lie closer to the 3,000. Similar, we look at the second example there, 54,321. Again, focusing on the thousands place. It tells us that um, 54,000 and 55,000 are going to be what our number falls in between. Um, so our hundreds place is 300. Well, we know that it takes 500 to be halfway between 1,000. So 300 is less than 500, so we know it's closer to the 54,000 than it is to the 55,000, because it's less than halfway. So again, our point's indicating that. You notice halfway be about right here. It's a little less than that. We can also find where t a number lies between two consecutive ten thousands. 
In our first example, 76,430, our 10,000's place is 7. So we know that it's going to be between 70,000 and 80,000. Okay, on our number line. So again, halfway, half of 10,000 is 5,000. So the midway would be 70,000, I'm sorry, would be 75,000. And our number is 76,000. So we know it's something a little bit past halfway. So again, notice the point to be a little bit beyond the halfway point. Okay? Now, another type of number line that we often will use when the numbers are large like this is what's called an open number line. On an upper open number line, you're not going to have all the hash marks on your not line. You're only going to use the hash marks necessary to describe where your number falls. So in this first example, we're trying to find between what two consecutive multiples of 100, the number 620 falls. So if our 100's place is 600, we know it's going to be somewhere between 600 and 700. And again, half of 100 is 50. So here, our 10's place is 20. 20 is less than 50, so we know it falls closer to the 600. So we place our dot a little bit closer to the 600 side. Okay. In the second example, our number is 950. So our 100's place is 900. So we know it's between 900 and 1000. You may be saying, 1000? There's no such thing. Well, yeah, 1000 just means 1000, right? So our number is between 900 and 1000. And so halfway would be 50. So our midway point is 950, which is our number we started with. So our point would lie perfectly in the center. Okay? You can do the same thing with 54,321. The hundreds place is 300, so it falls between 54,300 and 54,400. Again, half of 100 is 50, so 21 is less than 50, so it falls a little closer to the 54,300 side. Now, a good use for this is to help us with rounding. We often round numbers to make the math a little simpler when we're doing operations with these numbers. And so in order to round a number, we need to decide, is that number more than halfway? or less than halfway to the next place value that we're interested in. If it's exactly halfway or more than halfway, we will round up to the next place value. If it is less than halfway, then we are going to round back down. So here in this example, it says, what is 36 rounded to the nearest 10? So if we're looking to, for the nearest 10, that's going to be the 3, right, which is 30. So it's going to be between 30 and 40. And so halfway in tens place would be 5. So 35 would be the middle point. And so 36 is greater than 35. So this number would round up. It would round up to 40. Okay? Here in this next example, what is 619 rounded to the nearest 100? So 6 is in our hundreds place, so it's between 600 and 700. Halfway between 100 would be 50. So 650 would be in the middle. And so our tens place is 1. So that's much less than 5, right? So that is going to round down. So it's going to round down to 600. Let's look at 1,000. If we want to round to the nearest 1,000 on 2,358, the 2 is in the thousands place, so that tells us it's between 2,000 and 3,000. Half of 1,000 is 500, so 2,500 is in the center. Our hundreds place in our number is 3. That's less than 500, right? So for that one, we are going to round down to 2,000. In our final example, we're looking at ten thousands. We have 87,619. 8 is in the ten thousands place, so we're looking between 80,000 and 90,000. Again, half of 10,000 would be 5,000, so 85,000 would be in the center. Well, our one thousands place is a 7. 7 is greater than 5, so that means it's higher than halfway, meaning that it rounds up to 90,000. You can do the same thing with um, numbers that aren't at the specific place value you're trying to round to. I'm not going to go through all these examples. You can read through this, um, but looking at the first example, it says 52,904 rounded to the nearest tens place. Well, our tens place right now is a zero. Notice right here it's a zero. So we are going to fall somewhere between 52,900 and 52,910. So the halfway point between those two numbers would be 52,905, right? Five ones is halfway between 10. And so our number, 5,209, 5,000, sorry, 52,904 is 
slightly less than the halfway point of 52,905. So that number would actually round down to 52,900. Okay? So when you're looking for a place value that's not the first digit in the number, you still treat it the same way. You just locate that place value in the number, and then you want to say, okay, what between what two of that place value does my number fall, and is it more than halfway or is it less than halfway? If it's halfway or more, we round up. If it's less than halfway, we round down. So again, look at the other three examples and you can kind of see how that's being done. This is a um, slide to show you that when it is exactly halfway, then we still round up to the next place value. So our 95 is halfway between 90 and 100, so it rounds up to 100. Your 450 is halfway between 400 and 500, so it would round up to 500. Okay, 7,500 7, is halfway between 7,800, so it would round up to 8,000. So anytime it's directly in the center of our two numbers, we always round up to the next number. Besides rounding, we often use number lines to help us find out which numbers have more value or less value than other numbers. So in our examples on this screen, we're trying to place the numbers 80,593, 91,118, and 70,771 in order from least to greatest, so from smallest to greatest. And so a number line helps us to do that. If they provide us with the number line, we need to place the numbers on the number line they provide us with. In this case, you have a number line starting at 70,000, counting up by 5,000 each. Okay? So we would simply find out what, between which two values our numbers lie. So our first one, 80,593, falls between 80,000 and 85,000. So it goes here. Then 91,118 falls between 90,000 and 95,000. Okay? Because it's 91. So that would go here. And finally, 70,771 falls between 70,000 and 75,000, so it goes over here. Once you've placed your number on your number line, it becomes very simple to see which one has the least value, the middle value, and the greatest value by looking from left to right. The further left you are on the number line, the less value that number has. The further to the right on the number line, the more value that number has. So again, we, with the number line, you can spot quickly which one's the least, middle, and greatest. Now, in some questions, you're not provided with any markings on your number line. That's, again, called an open number line. So you will have to create your own markings. It will be up to you what you decide to make your intervals. Just make sure whatever you choose, the interval stays the same all the way across the number line. So in this first example, they're counting by 20 thousands. So notice it stays counting by 20 thousands all the way down the number line. Okay, then you simply place the numbers they provide you where they would go. If you choose to count by 5 thousands, like in the first example, you could do that as well. It's up to you what you choose to count by. Just make sure the distance between markings is the same. And you're counting by the same value each time. All right, on this example here, we're um, going to use a place value chart to help us find which number is least, middle, and greatest. So here we're looking at distances cities are from Austin, Texas. So we're going to place those three num numbers on our place value chart. So once we do that, we can see the value of each digit. So anytime you're trying to find out which is least to greatest, start with the far left digit and work your way to the right. In our example here, the far left digit has a 1 in all three numbers. So that doesn't really help us. So then we move over to the next one, the hundreds place. In the hundreds place, you can see that the values are different. We have 2, 3, and 7. 2 is the smallest value, 3 being the middle value, and 7 being the highest value. So our city that's 1,282 miles away is our shortest distance. So in this case, River Riverton um, Riverton's our s shortest distance. 1,386 would be our next shortest, which would be San Diego. And finally, 1,744 would be our longest distance, which is New York. Okay? Now in math, the way we can show that using symbols is we use these little arrow symbols. Realize that the arrow is always going to point to the smaller number. It's always going to point to the smaller number. This is what we call a less than symbol when it points to this direction. So 1,282 is less than 1,386, which is less than 1,744. In this final example, you're trying to pick which of these three numbers is between 59,721 and 57,912. Again, we can use a place value chart to help us do that. 
by going from left to right, we can see which ones fall in between. 